So we are going to do one tutorial on how to work with our aerial views and we will do this on Thomas Iron. The aerial views uh, we have decided to make it live under the screen space canvas which means whatever is in the screen space canvas is always displayed in front of everything in the game screen. Uh, we can say that the compass and the location bar is under they both of them are under the space screen space canvas because they are showing up here. If we were to remove, for instance, uh, the corner hood like deactivating, it would disappear because I am still messing with the space canvas, a screen space canvas. Uh, you are you? Do you think? Are you supposed to be sharing your screen with me? Oh yes, yeah, sorry. Thanks. But okay. but the Are screen, the screen, yeah, the, it, is, it has been recorded. But thanks. Yeah. Uh, so top view is here. However, I don't think this is the correct place. This is the top view from Francis E. Walter. So I'm going to delete this one. Let's go to the prefab folders. Uh, we have already created like some prefabs for each of these aerial views. So it's top view Thomas August 6. I'm going to drag it and drop into the screen space canvas. And voila. So this is the correct picture. Actually, it's not. Dr. Bodzin found it in one of our last meetings and we forgot to reveal that with him. But anyways, uh, okay, so we only have one place with photos. So that's why we, on, we only have also one photosphere. That's why we only have one photo balloon here. Let's mess with this photo balloon. And put it like up there because that's the correct place and it's gonna remind us that this is not correct what we need to do today Jen that is new is we have to change the way the photos are showing up uh, okay. so initially we had the black shader and in this black shader we had the gallery view but we are uh, ditching the gallery view, so I'm going to unpack the prefab so I can make changes, because if I try to delete something here, for instance, this close panel, Unity complains because yep. I'm trying to mess with the structure. So I'm going to open, uh, unpack the parent prefab, oops, unpack prefab, and then now that it's not blue anymore, I can do whatever I want. I'm gonna try to save the image container. No, image one and two. Because I have the captions here. The rest I'm gonna delete because that's from the past. So now we need to remember which are the photos that were selected by the group to be part of the game for Thomas Iron Works. Let's take a look at our slides. Yeah, we have the wrong picture. This is the correct one. Uh, and what I can we can do in order not to be working like on a wrong picture, we can use this low quality picture, but then we say, hey, Jeremy, we need you to take a new one with this framing. 
yep. above that bridge with the sandy bank. All right, so this is Beiji who taught me. I didn't know that. Like, I like to work in PowerPoint a lot, but I never did that until now. So whatever you do in PowerPoint, you can save as a picture. So it is very convenient. For example, now we click here and we save, click with the right button, save as picture. And I'm gonna save as uh, IVR1 Thomas Temporary. And it's done. Now I'm gonna import Uh, to our multimedia folder and I'm gonna leave here outside the the folders because we didn't uh, organize the project files as a group so I we usually do like IVR1 for the project and put in uh, uppercase letters, everything that we do so we keep track of things. So, for instance, here in the multimedia, we put these two photospheres uh, into the project, but we are not going to use both of them. So instead of just adding things to the final folders, we add things to the root folder, like multimedia, and then once yep. we are together, we can like delete the ones that we check that we are not using for reels and we store the correct ones in their respective folders. Okay. So I'm going to do the same now with this new photo that I created. Uh, I'm going to open my explorer. Oops. And I just need to drag and drop here. Uh, every time we import photos and we are going to be using as UI, it's important to change the texture type here in the inspector to sprite, to be and UI. Wait, 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 stop. My um, faces were on top of it. Say it again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> when we, oops, when we import photos uh, or pictures that we are going to be using as 2D user interface, 2D UI, it's important that we come here, select the a, a file that we just imported, go to the inspector of that file, yep. and change the texture here from default to sprite, which means 2D and UI. Yep, okay. So, and then you apply. Uh, we also talked about that last Friday, but it was the long video. So, Unity usually complains about photos that are yep. not yep. Yep. Uh, multiple of four. So, they tell you, we cannot compress this photo or this image, it's not a multiple of four. So what I do, I click with the right button here and I sh I ask it to show in Explorer. So I can click with the right button in Explorer and edit with Paint 3D. So when it's opening Paint 3D, I go to the Canvas option. And then in here in the Canvas, I can resize yeah. it so I can... Um, make sure that it's going to be a multiple of four. I think 62, 64 is a multiple of four and 20 is a multiple of four. So now let's save. Just save, it's not save as. We want to override the, the, the size of the picture. And then when we come back to Unity, Unity stops complaining because that photo uh, has been adjusted to a multiple of four. Great. Now, instead of using that back one, I'm going to uh, turn off the black shader again and these images because we're going to be working individually with these things. First thing I'm going to do is change the Thomas Iron Aerial to the Thomas Temporary. Okay. So we know where we are putting the balloon. Yep. We also have to put the label, so it's important that we remember that. Uh, let's just start with the labels because it's something that doesn't have many things to do. Uh, 
I'm gonna create a empty game object just to organize the labels and inside this labels game object I'm going to be creating a UI text mesh pro so I can put the text it was a grid in our meeting that the size would be 30 and it yep. would be one with an outline like this yeah um, the first one let me see the the slides again I forgot So we have Lehigh Canal, Lehigh River, Hokendaqua, and Karasakwa. So we will have one for Lehigh River. I'm going to duplicate this Lehigh River with Ctrl D. I hold Ctrl, hit D. Then I hit F2 to rename it. And it's going to be Lehigh Canal. And I'm going to duplicate this. Uh, Two, and I'm gonna the first one I'm gonna rename for Hokendaqua, and the second one Karasakwa. All of them are they are written new text because in fact I didn't change the text component. I just renamed the game object. Yeah, so the one in the Little High River, I have to come here, and yeah, uh, you can't drag and drop. No, because this is not a a place for you to drop anything. It's a text. Can you uh, copy paste? I can only copy paste if I if I get it from here, from this thing here. I can copy and paste. Okay. Yeah, good good idea by the way. Uh, gotcha. However, I was thinking, are we going to be translating Lehigh River to Spanish as well? That was that was what I was wondering. Do we are we gonna have to translate everything? We can't. I mean, some stuff we can't. But can we? We can. We can uh, translate the Lehigh River. So it doesn't matter that it's written Lehigh River here. What we need to do. We can we can come back to translate it in another uh, after we finish this section. Otherwise, it's gonna be messy. Let's go to the Lehigh High Canal, just like you suggested. Copy and paste. This time around, I'm gonna give a space because it's gonna be. The yep. One. Yeah. So uh, they are not in the correct places. Karasakwa is the only one that is correct, which is here. But it's the uh, contrast is not quite good, I guess. What do you think, Jen? Is it good? Um. Yeah, that one's tough to see. And Lehigh Canal is a little tough, too. Oh, but Lehigh Canal is, is not in the correct place. Let's, so let's apply this uh, whatever contrast feature to the Karasakwa one. And then we know that that is a good... Uh, choices set of choices for us to apply to the other ones so let's okay. go to the karasakwa one um, let me see what i can do here let me see if i can if i add another shadow component if it helps a little oops i'm removing the it's like half half here it's the alpha channel the alpha channel controls the transparency of things. So I'm bumping it all to the way up. And the effect distance starts by default by one and minus one. So if I drag here, I can see if it's being applied. Nothing is being applied. Maybe it's because it's... Uh... Yes, it's another... It's a text mesh pro. It's not receiving shadow. I didn't want to do this here. Because when we change something here, okay, I'm going to do something else. Instead of create messing with the text, I'm going to create a, a visual uh, game object to use as a background. So I'm going to create a UI 
image and uh, I need to put it behind Karasakwa so I'm gonna make it Karasakwa child of the image remember I told you on Friday in when you are working in 2D w the, what you determine to what is gonna be in front of each other it's the position in the hierarchy so the lower it is like the the backwards they are so if I had left Karasakwa on top of image Karasako would be behind image. So okay. we do this. In order yep. not for this image to be like laying like loose here, for instance, if I drag Karasako, it's not bringing the image together. So I'm gonna uh, make Karasako become a child of this image. So when I drag the image, everything goes together. And now I can, uh, before I do that actually, I'm gonna make Karasako outside again. I'm going to work on the image by itself. Okay. So, what do you think would be nice here? Like uh, a transparency like this. We can also uh, mess with the format. Currently, it's a very squarey one because we don't have any source image here in the image script. But we can put something like that, for instance. That looks good. Like a shh. It brings uh, it out. Yeah, so let me see if I. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So now that image is done. I, I'm, I'm gonna be putting Karasakwa under it. And it's fine. Oops. I gotta work with image. Uh, in order not, not to lose time, I'm going to duplicate the Karasakwa game objects that I, we worked now here. And I'm going to rename it as Hokendakwa. Ah, that's so smart. Because then we don't have to be add, uh, yep. you know, all the details of the numbers and everything yep. else. Uh, did you want that to be... A child? Yes, because we are also going to be using the background shader here to help okay. the contrast. The only thing that we will have to adjust is that Hokendakwa is light longer than Karasakwa, so we need to uh, stretch the width and the position. So the problem of working with together, because the child goes together, so I'm gonna un unparent. Oops, not like this. Unparent mm -hmm. here, so I can work with this Hawking background image before. Great. And now I'm gonna make Hawking background become a child again. Tada! All right. Now let's delete the previous Hawking background. And let's go to the Lehigh Canal. Lehigh Canal needs to be rotated. I'm going to put it middle, middle here. So there are two ways for us to rotate. We can uh, either like hover the mouse to the cord outside the corner of the blue thing. Can you see that my cursor changed? So we can do this. Hmm. Or we can come directly to the root. Uh, I'm still having Lehigh Canal game object selected. I can come to the Rect Transform Rotation and rotate stuff here. You can put numbers as we will. Or yep. you can also use this like if you hover the mouse over the letter or the name of the variable, you can click and drag to the left or to the right 
and your mouse goes over the edge of the screen and starts over. Can you see? Yeah. So it, it's very helpful for you to be making adjustments on the go. Do you um, have to have a... Go ahead. Your mouse clicked or anything? Yes, for this, for this to happen, like, can you see that my cursor changes to a cursor with like left and right? Yeah, how come? So, because I hovered over the letter of the variable. Okay, but you're, and then you click your... Yeah, left? and then uh, yeah, I click with the left button and then I hold it. So while I'm holding, if I drag, it goes okay. and changes, okay? I'm gonna, uh, the third one would be like clicking here in the rotation tool and rotating. But we usually use these tools when we are working with 3D. Uh, 2D, we usually use this move one or the erect uh, tool because we can change the size and stuff. I'm gonna do this one here, it's better. Let me hike now. So what do you think? Is that good? Do we need to apply the shader, the, like the contrast behind it as well? No, I can see it. All right. It stands out. And now the high river. Oh, I'm going to click here to align to center and middle. Sweet. Are we also going to be like rotating the Lehigh River? No, they didn't. Uh, I wouldn't. Yeah, they, uh, Dr. Bodzing did uh, a hard enter here like this. There, yeah, that looks good. And then you can move it over a tiny bit. And then, so it's right on top of river. Yeah, perfect. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Maybe, no, maybe I'm going to put it here. I don't know, Warmer. here. Warmer, yeah. perfect. So I'm going to save this. So, Jen, this is the end for labeling our map, okay? Okay. Uh, I'm going to check with you now if all the prefabs for the aerial views have the correct pictures already. So I'm going to go to the project folder. Ouch. So when you start dragging something that isn't supposed to be dragged like I did now, I'm dragging the animation folder. I, I continue holding my click button, the left button, and I hit ask, escape. So you can cancel whatever wrong thing you were dragging. Gotcha. Because it's terrible when you drag it accidentally and an entire folder goes to inside another folder. <laughs> if you happen to drag it and you see that Unity or any software is like copying the files, you can wait it to be copied and then you just uh, do Ctrl Z once because it's gonna go back to the original place. Okay. When we do this kind of mess, we need to be patient. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, we really mess stuff up and we forget where where the folder went to. So uh, I'm going to go to our prefab folders, and in the prefab folders, we should have lots of air top view prefabs. And we talked about that last week. Yeah. Uh, we worked uh, with the prefab variant situation. These ones that have the arrows. Yeah. Because we created all of them from the top view base. However, we need each one of them to have their individual photos. So um, we are, let me open our document here to check what we need to do. So Thomas Hamilton, you will be doing Hamilton Street and uh, that's it. Okay, so let's see if the Hamilton Street top view has, yes, it has, take a look here. When I selected the prefab, the source image is Hamilton Aerial, which is the one from Allentown. You can see the river bend, the water filtration, uh, water, waste, water, waste treatment plant stuff. So it's correct. Good. Um, so now let's go to the photos the real challenge here black shader is working fine and uh, i'm gonna make images uh, become a, a child of the black shader mm. 
just keep in mind Jen that like the top view I'm using the scene view so I can edit stuff so it's like my work environment and the yeah. bottom one is the game one gotcha. and for, for you to um, keep track of what is inside the boundaries of the view of the game view or not you gotta be checking this white line here of the canvas okay, okay. so image one and two I'm gonna drag them here this is not the way we want and um, we need uh, we need to see how many photos I did I tried to do that but I forgot I got sidetracked um, so we have one photo two three four So it's going to be up to us. Be before Be uh, Beige left our pre-meeting, she said that she heard our mentor saying that they like this way here. However, when it was displayed like this, they would like to be able to click and expand that image. Uh. So... I, 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 to be honest, I don't remember that. I, I was thinking about like putting a button back and forth. But I like, like this enlarge idea. Enlarge button. Huh? <clears throat> like an enlarger zoom button. Oh, no. Yeah, that's what Babe said. What I was yeah. thinking about was just creating like uh, some kind of button here and here, like next button or next photo or previous photo but like this is kind of boring because they don't have a glimpse of everything that they have to to see so let's work with this first workflow uh, and then in this very first caption we can say hey hover uh, select the photo and click click it to enlarge or something like that so let's go for that uh, I'm going to open uh, PowerPoint again Okay. Because I need to create this uh, bigger photo with all of them together. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. Copy and paste. I'm going to duplicate this here so I can make smaller thumbnails of these photos. I don't know if you notice, but I kind of have some uh, dashed guidelines here that I use to divide my uh, slide in PowerPoint. If you ever want to do that, like you can create as many as you want. You can click with the right button uh, here on this outside area of the slide. And then there is an option grid and guidelines, guides. You can add vertical and horizontal lines as many as you want. Why is this useful? Because the photos like they snap to these guidelines so it's, it's very handy for us that we work with creating uh, instructional media all the time in this situation here i use it to make sure that i'm dividing them in half half correctly So this one's gonna be problematic. We could use one taking the side of the two. Okay, so I'm open for ideas. How do we make a mosaic mosaic of these photos and have it like in a square, kind of square? shape 
or triangular, but not, not tri rectangular, let's try to do like this. No, this is taking too much space. Why? That looks good. But uh, this is not going to be good when we are in the game interface, because it's going to be a rectangle. We should be aiming at having a collection of photos that is square, like this one here, because then they will be the photos. They will be able to see the photo selection to enlarge, without losing the background uh, contextual view that they have from the map. That's what we had discussed in the last meeting. So what I'm trying to ask you to help me with ideas is like, how do we create a kind of sh square shape mosaic? without making them look weird. Why don't you put the uh, fourth picture on top of the two? Like this? But then it's going to be a, a, a vertical rectangle. The problem on this one here, it's this panoramic photo down here. Let me ungroup everything. Why don't you bring that one, the one on the bottom up to the top and stretch the two middle ones a little bit and make it rectangle that way. Wait, make, say that again? Make, make the bottom picture smaller so that it fits in a corner. Like Keep this? Yeah. All right. Okay, so it's going to be square. Fine, let's do this then. It's not like it exists anymore. They're not going to look for it. <laughs> okay. Uh... Oh, so now in order to make things have the same size, I usually go uh, to this picture format thing and I see the height here. So the top ones have two I'm going to put two to make it a beautiful round number. And I know this is perfectionism, but we got to do our best in our jobs. This one is 2.49, so it's not the same. I'm going to make it two as well. And this one, two. Oh, we can even stretch it a little more, the other thing. Oh. Uh, another thing that I do in order to check, because we are trying to create a, like one photo made of four, I, I want to see if there's spaces in between them. Uh, for me to see if there's better, like, I like to change the color of the background to black or any very, uh, like, pink or whatever color. See, I can see here that the spaces. And now we select them all. Control G to group them. And we can even stretch all together because now they have the same size. Something that I told you last week and it also works for other uh, visual software is like when we are resizing, if we only drag and drop, it resizes in all axes. So it stretches images and we don't like it. So if you hold Shift, I guess, yes, you can just stretch. Uh, and it maintains the proportions. Ta -da. Now I'll click with the right button, save as picture. I'm gonna name it as Thomas Thumbnails. Multimedia, import that photo.
Oh, we gotta check whether it's a multiple of four. Oh. I oh, could right. have I could have done that in PowerPoint, but I got so used to doing like in paint. Oh please. Multiple of four. Yay! Unity didn't complain. Okay. But it's not a multiple of four. Why haven't you complained, Unity? Oh, hmm. it's complaining. Here it is. All right. But next time around, I'm going to try to do this in PowerPoint already. Canvas minus four, seven, four. It didn't change. Oh, 94 is not a multiple of 4. 74 is okay. My mental math is not good. Let's go back to paint. Alrighty, so image one and image two will be images that will be enlarged. So I'm not going to be working with them now. We have to create a new image file under the black shader. And this image file will receive the Thomas thumbnails. And we want that to be the same size just like Dr. Bodzin asked, as this one. Okay, how do I do that? It's gonna be just eyeballing and half of the... So, Jen, so far so good, what do you, th do you think? Yep. I think... I like them. Should we remove these two labels here because... I like that it gives information about, and there's one up top that has it too. They all have. Okay. Okay, Jen. fine. So, something that we have to figure now is that the labels cannot be in front of the photos or whatever. So I'm going to drag the labels game object behind the black shader. Okay. Okay, now it's fixed. The balloon also needs to go back the black shader. Uh, now it's the time for magic. So they want something that we hover and we can click, right? So how do you give a feed, a visual feedback if I'm hovering this image? How do you give a individualized visual feedback for each one of these four pictures? Do you have any idea? Um, can you have it move? Yeah. Having them move, it's going to be a little hard because we would need to uh, insert another individual copy of each photos and make them appear in a. Not maybe not maybe not move, but get bigger. Yeah, get bigger. It's the same thing uh, because this is this is a, a one picture only that has four individualized pictures. But if we had assembled all of them individually into these four side-by-side -side photos, fine, that would be fine. We could ask it to increase the size. But if it but if when it hovered, that picture took up the whole space. 
And then when the cursor moved off it, it went back to the original size. Yeah, but like in order to for that to happen, uh, we would need to include here in the game objects. Let me put the uh, the, the individual uh, picture. Uh, yeah, you got it. So thumbnails. Because if I hover the thumbnails photo, all of them are gonna be expanded or whatever. right. So, uh, but that that was a, a nice idea. I wanna show you a trick that like feedback, visual feedback trick. Instead of making them change size or whatever, move, let's just ask them to highlight. Yeah, I was going to say that, a yellow box around it. Yeah, so highlighting is easier for us to create quickly because here in the thumbnails, we can create a new UI image. Then uh, we position this UI image exactly uh, on top of the photos we have. And then I'm going to name it highlight one. And then I'm going to uh, work the highlight. Like you can either highlight as a whole or just like you said, around it. Let's see how we do that. First, we need to, if you just want to highlight as a whole, you just change the color. And then you work on the alpha channel, remove the alpha channel. So you're going to be creating like a transparency hue over that picture. OK? Mm -hmm. So let's try to use our partners' colors. I want to say that it might be better if they all had that on top. And then when you clicked on it, it went away. That, that's, what's going to that's what's going to happen. I'm, okay. just, I'm just showing you and for our video how to create this illusion. The first illusion is when you want the picture to be uh, highlighted as a whole. The second illusion is just like you said, if you wanted the picture to have a, an outline. For you to have an outline, you have to plug a, a, a source image here. So like a square, it can be a square. Let me see, usually we, uh, we have this... Uh, UI mask or whatever photos here. And then after you select like UI sprite, you have to change the image type to something that will allow you to check the fill center option. If I remove the fill center, you only get the borders. See that? Yep. So then I would like make the highlight a little stronger it can be all the way up so we have an, a second way of making highlights okay this highlight by the way jen it could be any kind of like you can even create the format you want for instance let's say that i want highlight with this star so i put this yep. star shape in, on top of okay yep so let's move on which one do you want the highlight around the photos or the highlight over uh, with the color like this when we hover the mouse i like the highlight around the corners around it which yeah. color is gonna be is it gonna be orange is it gonna be light green dark green or how maroon? about dnl maroon or dnl yellow i don't have dnl Matters. yellow yeah so the maroon, did it look good? No, yellow's better. By yellow, you mean this one here? No, down farther where it says highlighted. Oh, but this is not the DNL's color. How about higher where it says yellow? So all of the only four colors we have for from our partner is DNL maroon, DNL orange, DNL light green, and DNL dark green. Then orange. I like orange. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, but if we play our game, nothing is happening yet. It's so static. We need to make uh, stuff happen here. So, I am going to start making stuff happen from the balloon. And this is important now because it's how we program with Unity without code. So, 
our idea is when we click the balloon, that uh, dark screen with the thumbnails appear so we can browse the photos we want to enlarge. So we have to click the balloon and this balloon doesn't have a button, so no problem. In this game object of the balloon, I'm going to add a component. Oh, it's already... Oh, there is a button. The balloon is a button. Okay. So, in the balloon game object, there is a component button, and this button has a script to control what it does when you click this button. So, on click, what's going to happen? The black shader, we drag it here, and here we choose a function. Which function we want? We want the game object black shader to be active. So we put set active and we check the check mark, the checkbox. If the checkbox is not marked, it's the opposite that happens. So gotcha. It's false. So we want it to be true. It's set uh, black shader, set active, true. Uh, the dummy, we are not really working with the dummy yet, so I'm gonna delete this. I'm gonna click outside here. If I select this, I can click here in this minus and remove it. Good. Now, uh, my black shader is not activated by default, which is fine. But I w let's mock this click. I clicked here. So I want my black shader to be active. So it's fine. It's showing the, the thumbnails. Great. Yep. However, the highlight is showing all together. And we don't want that to happen uh, like this. So the highlight needs to be deactivated. So how do we do in order to the, for the highlight to be appearing when we hover? We are going to select the highlight game object and we are going to be creating, uh, sorry, adding a trigger component. A trigger component, we can control uh, how we trigger visual or animation or whatever events in Unity. That's why it's called event trigger. When you click it, the component is kind of poor, but you can click add new event type. And the one I want is on pointer enter. Why? On pointer enter means when I move my mouse cursor or whatever, like the pointer from the virtual reality controller, over the space of the game object, and the space of the game object is the one that we are dealing with, the highlight one. Uh, I can even see better here in this scene view because even though it's deactive, if I have the highlight selected, I still have the bounding boxes of the game object. So I'm going to add a event trigger point enter and it says it's empty. Nothing is happening yet, but I'm going to add one and I'm going to drag the very highlight here. And when I hover, when I enter here, what I want it to do, I want the function to acti set active true. If I try it now, you will see that it's gonna work. If I hover the mouse over, oh, it's not working. Something is wrong. We gotta fix. What is that? Oh, it's because of the fuel center. I wonder. No. Okay. Let me let me give some steps back. Mm hmm. Event trigger, event system. Why is this not working? Ooh, weird. Okay, thumbnails, array cast on. Color all the way up. Black shader, raycast on.
the victory room. It's not triggering and I don't know why. That must be a very dumb mistake that I'm doing. You have to have highlighted on at the top. No, because that's what I'm trying to do here. I want it to... Oh, okay, found it. The dumb mistake, and it's... You helped me. How can I... Uh, how can I uh, hover over an object that is not active in the scene? It's not there. So if I do this during the game, nothing is here. And I'm going to... I'm going to check if that's the correct thing by making it visible and I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to ask highlights to deactivate when I hover. You should have it lighter so that it so that it's uh, opaque so that you can see through it. And then when the highlight turns off, the picture's going to be brighter. Uh, the picture is going to be what? It's going to be it's going to be it's going to stand out more because the other ones are going to have a light orange on top of them. Do mm. you but understand it, what I'm saying? I kind of understood, but I, I thought it would be better if we did that like a... Try it. If it was like black or grayish, like making them obscured, and then when we hovered, they would be yeah. appearing. Yeah. The inverse of highlighting, actually. Right. But before we do that, let me tell you... you let me show you how to do the trick all the way through. Okay. Uh, so I showed you that I did the opposite. So the hypothesis was correct. The object was not there. Now it is. So if I hover, it disappears. So if you needed this to happen, what I, what would I what would I do here? Let me put the correct thing again. So we want this to show when we hover. I would be creating another, uh, a copy of that object, but I would make it transparent and I would be putting the event trigger on that. So I'm gonna be putting here, highlight trigger. So I don't need the event uh, to be... I can leave it because maybe we will need to click it on the photo. I'm going to add here one thing and I'm going to ask the highlight trigger too make the game object highlight one become active. Now I can deactivate the highlight because the highlight trigger is active and is here in the same space. And when I hover, it's gonna show up. But when I hover outside, it doesn't disappear. So what I need to do is I need to create another event type, but it's gonna be the opposite on pointer exit. Unit is very kind and it already gives you the same uh, game object because if it's on pointer enter here and you are adding exit, so you're working with probably working with the same thing. So you just unclick here and it should work. And it's not going to work in this case, I guess, because, oh, it's working. This highlight that we created, the picture is void in the middle it only has the outside color as something that we can interact with but anyways this is uh, one way of doing things let's do the other way that you suggested in another photo and then we can uh, bring it for the meeting on friday so they decide which one it's best or they yeah. prefer actually we talked about that last week uh, in our sync trio. We don't use time thinking about details. We just develop as many possible ways and leave to uh, to our bosses to decide which ones they prefer. 
better better to give them choices to choose from than unlimited options from their imagination. All what right, okay. Better versus what do you want it to look like? So now we are going to do the one that you suggested. I'm going to create a new photo here, a new image. I'm going to hover that over the picture here. So you suggested that it would have the orange color like this as a beginning. Well, now here's the problem with that. I didn't realize the Thomas Ironworks photo was tinted. See how it's a different color than well, all the rest of them? If you, I can, I can make it become black and white as well. I think you need to, otherwise people will get confused. I was confused. Okay, so let me go. How did that happen? No, that's the original photo. I know. Oh. I so we we untint this one from the thumbnail, but when they click, they're gonna be seeing the original one with this old color. Exactly. All exactly. Right. Um, let me go back to that multimedia folder, Thomas thumbnails. I'm gonna click with the right button, show in Explorer, click with the right button, and I'm gonna Actually, I'm going to drag it to PowerPoint. I cannot do that. Oh, no, it's here, our original one. OK, so, so let's do this here. I'm selecting just this one, and I'm going to go to the color effects and put it black and white. It's color. Right there. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. Perfect. Huh. So I'm going to try to uh, correct the size of the photo here to be, um, I can't, I don't know how to make a multiple for here. Let's see, the group can't, okay, let's make the group height 8 and width 8. Now. 10. Ten is not a multiple of four, Junior. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Okay. Uh, How about it? But it's weird. I'm going to put eight and twelve. Okay, it's weird. I'm gonna I'm gonna fix it in paint just like I did before. It's fine. Save as Thomas thumbnail. Save replace. Now I'm gonna open the same photo that I replaced. No, not this one. I replace you. I okay. I'm gonna go to Unity. Delete this one. Drag the new one there. Oh, it's 1024 by 1024 already. No, it's not. Okay, I'm gonna click with the right button, show an explorer. Click with the right button, edit with paint 3D, canvas 92 and 72. Save over. Okay. So we fixed that issue. So what you had suggested is that when we hover the Orange is going to disappear. Yeah. And they're all orange to begin with. Okay. So I'm and going... then when you and then when the hover when when you move your cursor off, the highlight comes back and it covers up again. Mm -hmm. So I'm yeah. duplicating them and creating like three 
and yep. pour. So I already placed them where they should be. Yeah, I think that's great. I think that's a great idea. But remember, you're biased. It really this is your huh? idea. You're biased. That's your idea. <laughs> well, okay. True. Um, I do like to be right. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that it's a great idea. You're saying it's a great idea because you're but like, I can say that my idea is great again. But that's why we, we do this in our uh, development work. We we put all ideas on the paper and we ask them to choose. So whatever they choose. Yeah, honestly, I think highlighting around would look great too. I was just thrown off by the um, color of that upper left picture. That's through me. So I am adding the event trigger in the highlight too. And it's gonna be a non pointer enter adding, but here, when the pointer enters, it's gonna make the game object disappear. So it's correct. And I'm gonna do step by step. So let's do this. Play. If I hover the second picture, it should disappear. Okay. But you said that when we hover over uh, outside, it should come back again, right? Right. So highlight two is selected in the hierarchy. Now I'm going to add another event type for this highlight to game object, and it's going to be a pointer exit. Yep, got and you. When, when it, we exit, the image is going to show up, so it's active. I'm going to play. Ooh, why it's not working? That's weird. Okay, let's see, what did I do wrong? Oh. Okay, so it's the same issue that I had before. I need to have a highlight trigger. Because the moment I ask this photo to disappear, it disappears. I don't have any boundary anymore for the event trigger to be entering or exiting. Well, then do your idea and have it just be... Um when you roll the cursor over, the highlight shows up, the border shows up. No, but we are also studying this video. So okay. we are implementing lots of tricks to make this visual feedback. And we are also seeing how we fix problems that come in the middle of the uh, development process. So in the other one, I had uh, the highlight trigger. Uh, I guess we will have it as well, but it's going to highlight one trigger, and this is highlight two trigger. Uh, the difference is going to be that I need this highlight two. So instead of having two events on the same thing, you're having two things each with one event? I guess so, yes. All right, I gotta let my dog out. I'll be back in a second. Okay.
I'm back. So uh, I, I use this strategy of the highlight trigger. So there is an invisible uh, photo over this area. And when I hover, the color behind it disappears. And when I exit, the color comes back on. The same way we did with the outside highlight. Hey, awesome. So you awesome. just you just have to remember that this is a trick because we we are not dealing with the highlight. The highlight is just like being highlighted or not. That's the just what we're calling it. The trigger is that is what is controlling and for it to be controlling it needs to be transparent. So it's all alpha is zero here. Because then it leaves in front of everything and then we the mouse hits it and the animation happens. Okay. Uh, now let's. Uh, we are running out of time, but in the video also shouldn't be long. Let's let's proceed to the clicking feature. When I click here, I want the picture, the image one, to show up. So I am going to still be using the highlight trigger one. So instead of pointer enter or pointer exit, I'm going to add an event called pointer click. And when pointer click, I'm going to make image one active. The only thing that I need to check here is the size of image one. They want that to be bigger. So. And the caption is here. So Jen, the outside boundary, the, the blue boundaries, is the game uh, game object itself. The, okay. ye the yellow one, it's the boundary for the text mesh text pro. Box. So gotcha. what I did here, I don't know if you can see, like there is a, a slight padding for the text yep. not to be thing uh, touching the edges. This yep. padding you do here. In the text mesh pro component, you come here. There's extra settings. You have to open this. And then you put margins. margins. I put 10, 5, 10, 5. But you okay, do whatever you excellent. want. Okay? Thank you. You yep. can also do it manually, but then it's going to be not symmetric. You can Yeah, no, I like that. Yeah. All right. Um, no, 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 no. So now, how do we close this image? Should we do we use the same highlighting effect or should we put an X button here next to that? X button. Okay, so it's going to be a next button. UI image. I'm going to. Oops, and I'm going to do this. I guess we have the perfect picture for that. It can be either this one. No. Or. Oh, oh. No, I would just use the X. Just the yeah. X? Yeah. And put it right in the corner of the picture. Like this or outside? Yep. No, right in the box. Isn't that normally how you X out of a Okay. Picture? I'm going to create a, a shadow uh, so yes. it gets so... Or, 
or a box around it. Can you highlight that? I, I don't know if the box is going to be nice. Okay. Uh, I, good. So I'm going to make the shadow here. So in order to make a shadow, I selected the... I'm going to X uh, close button. So the close button is highlighted. I'm going to add a component called shadow. See, now we have a kind of like, oh, I'm jumping out. I like to remove the alpha or put all black. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And if you want to mess with where the shadow is, you, you mess with the effect distance here. Okay? Okay, yep, yep, yep. That's cool. So, minus two, minus two. Nah, I mean, oh, whatever, like minus two, minus two. If they don't like, they change it. Now we are going to click the close button and we want to make it uh, to respond to the event. So I'm going to add a component called, again, event trigger. And I'm going to click on click. What will happen on click? The image one, so everything here is going to disappear. And it should work. Let's see. Ta da! Yay. So, and then we have to. Now, how do they get out of that? I'm sorry? How are they going to get out of the first batch, batch of pictures? We are going to be putting a close button for that as well. Gotcha. Okay. So. Here in the thumbnails. Yay. However, this is in front of one of the pictures. Is that a problem? Well, isn't the aren't they all gonna be orange? Yes. Are they all gonna be shaded? If yes. that's what you choose. Like, only, yes. Yeah, so it's all gonna be shaded. Okay. Even well, even the picture in the upper left hand corner, if they like shading better, they'll all be shaded. If they like highlighting better, none of them will be highlighted and you'll know to click the X to get out because it'll be it'll be uh, uniform. Uh -huh. Right. I don't know. We can ask. That's a really good question. What feels, you know. And then we complete it. Yep. So it's working. We put the labels. Save. Uh, the balloon is here. So it's when we hover, it highlights. We click. Yep. It opens the black shader. We put all these pictures to live under the black shader. So the thumbnails is the main one. But for the, for the effects to happen, we created lots of highlights and highlights triggers. Yep. The thumbnails also has a close button, so we can close it. Uh, and when we click one of them, which one did I click? This one. No. This one. Yeah. Oh, no, we, none we of them were click. It was all hover. So it's not working yet. Uh, we no. have to ask one of them to okay. open image one. Wait, wait. Oh, it's wrong here. So I want to be active. Yep. So it's picture one. Click. And then we read the stuff and then we click here. It closes. Very simple, but it's fluid, working well. Not many shenanigans, effects or whatever. And we have one minute, so we are closing with that. Uh, can I uh, can I assign you then to do this kind this work to all the other photospheres? Like if they don't have the labels, you put the labels and creating these uh, things here, or you can also like one, one, okay, or two. I'll do two. I can do two. So when Friday. Yes. Yes, I can do two by Friday. Can you do Hamilton Street then? 
and cementum because we didn't make this situation here for cementum nor the labels so I'm gonna write there in our document number uh, 5304 you'll be working on uh, let me show you I had I had written selected photos here here so the images and labels. Okay, my for... my keyboard my keyboard just stopped working. Why? That happened. I, okay. Is this a laptop? Yeah. The letters don't work, but my mouse does, and the numbers don't. Numbers. How do you how do you lock the keyboard? It depends on the, oh, I don't know. I know how to lock the touchpad. So this is your homework for Friday, following this video. I gotta finish the video. So, um, 